Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Motivation for part two with Dr. David Molapo. An unbelievable conversation that we had last week. And if you did miss it, please be sure to check it out. Dr. David, you were inspiring us in ways that we have never been inspired. I hope people took your message from last week and I hope they've implemented a few of it in this week, trying to look internally to try and fix themselves up, to try and build all the broken pieces within them. Your, your words of wisdom are unbelievable. We ended the show off discussing the ego. And I want to know from you how important, detrimental, devastating, or destructive is the ego to an individual? Again, thanks so much, Mo, for this wonderful opportunity to inspire people and to serve people. The word ego in my book, Choose to Change, I define ego two ways. One, you can edge God out or you can exalt God only. What does that mean? Is it religion? No. Exalt God only means you begin to lower yourself and realize that you can learn from other people. Most of us, so-called influential and powerful leaders, we have made that big mistake of edging God out because God uses ordinary people. When you come to a point where you are self-sufficient, you come to a point where you are not willing to learn from someone else, you have edged God out because God uses ordinary people. Sometimes then what we do, we exalt ourselves only. And that's the danger because you always want to be seen. I have learned something about leadership. An effective and a powerful leader is a leader who knows how to deal with their insecurities, with their jealousies, and with their ego. And the ego simply says, I don't know everything. I'm willing to learn. The title of my book there was, If You're Not Growing, You Are Dying. And the number one thing that is detrimental is deal with your, you do not know everything. You are not the general manager of the world. And when you begin to have that kind of attitude, then a lot of things will happen. I have people in my life when I went through adversities. Let me, um, let me dive into that. When I went through adversities in my life, I lost a lot of money. Dimension did. I lost my marriage. And I realized that what helped me were three things. I had to deal with the ego. And because of that ego, I had a coach, a mentor, and a therapist. Because a coach is a person you allow in your life to look at your blind spots. When you are filled with ego, you don't see your blind spots. If you're playing soccer, a person who says, on the other side, they can see things you don't see. Yes. And you respond to that. If you're in a boxing ring, a coach will tell you, watch the left jab, watch the right. But you must allow that coach to speak into your life. That's what helped me. The second thing is, it's not enough just to have a coach. When you let go of your ego, you have a mentor. And a mentor sometimes must be a tall mentor, you know, <laughs> because a tall mentor wants you to look at, yes, you've gone through difficult times. Yes, you know this, but there's still an opportunity for you to expand your capacity. Because deep down inside of you, the skill set is that you need to grow. Because when you grow, you're able to enable, equip, and empower other people. So you need a mentor who will walk alongside of you. But a therapist is that person that I spoke about who will say, you know what? While you're doing all of this thing, also need to take care of your health. You need to take care of yourself. Watch what you eat, watch your diet, whatever. But if you're full of yourself with an attitude, you know, <laughs> neck popping and finger snapping, you'll never go anywhere. So I want to encourage people, deal with that ego, swallow that pride, because anyway, when you swallow the pride, you will never be fat. Let's leave that alone, okay? <laughs> I, I love what you said there. Sure. I mean, if you want to, if you want to train, and I mean, I'm in the fitness industry and in the yes. health industry, and there's a lot of people who come to me with advice for training, for training programs, for health, diet tips, all of this. And I understand that you're not going to do this on your own. Correct. So why would you, when it comes to your body, you want to invest everything. You want to get a trainer. You want to eat the best food. You want to do everything possible. Why are we not doing it with our mind? Get the therapist, get the mentor, get the coach, people who guide you, people who direct you, people who look at you from, from a way without judging you. Yes. People who take you and say, you know what, this is what I see in you. And again, like we spoke about friends of the future. Yes. These are people that we need to bring in our lives. And I wish people can understand this concept that going to a therapist does not mean that you are crazy. Yes. Being brought up in the communities we were brought up in, the word therapist already meant you have a mental disorder. Correct. But... I always believe before something breaks, fix it. Yes. So go to the therapist before you have the issue so that you understand 
what might lead to the break. You don't take your car for a service when the car is broken. Correct, right? correct. You need to take it when the light comes on and says, okay, you need a service. Why? Because something should not break. Yeah. And you go to a mechanic. You're not sitting and trying to fix the car yourself. Yes. You take it to the experts. So when it comes to mental health as well, look for the experts. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but look for the experts yes. that help you, that open your mind, that see your true potential and that find what motivates you and help you grow with that. You mentioned last week uh, when we had the show about the, the suicide rate, particularly among men. And an interesting enough, statistics show that men have got a lot of egos. And unfortunately, in our communities, we were never taught about this thing, the mind. We talk about all the different things, but a mind is the most powerful weapon. You know, that whole thing of thinking positively, whatever, because we've got so much toxin. People, some of us are victim of people's words. When I grew up, my mother is colored, my father is black. In a context of South Africa, mm. I'm a mixed masala or a fruit cocktail. <gasps> and I struggle in my mind, that the, the, those things of being defined by people. I'm half colored, I'm half black. And ish, to make matters worse, the white people say, Rechte kafur, you know, so, <laughs> and you know, in the Islamic faith, kafur means a person who doesn't believe, you know, in God. So you've got all of those things. So until I had the decaffeination process, and it begins in the mind, to decaffeinate yourself, to begin to understand, is that paradigm shift? Not only as a child, even in business. Right now, we're moving into the fourth industrial revolution. It's a disruption. And a lot of people are still having the old technology. The BBT is born before technology. Go to people, therapists, who can say things are changing in life, in technology, the way we do things. So it's about life, but this, we don't invest in our mind. We can invest in cars and everything. That is why I'm here to support you more, because you're doing a good job in that we need to begin to question ourselves, dialogue on this thing of opening our mind because what God has given us here, the capacity that is in here, it's amazing stuff. And the sooner we do that, finding a therapist, okay, don't call it therapist, call it a counselor, okay, whatever is finding a teacher, find a guru, whatever way that suits or you. Friends, or a future friend. Or a future friend, that's it, you know, an FF, future friends, then whatever it is, that's what helped me during my adversity. I let go of that ego, allowed people in my space. And today I am what I am today because of those people. And now it gives me an opportunity to be able to help people on television, on radio, in the schools, in the corporate world, lead us all over the world. You know, sitting here with you, I understand why you are saying find a mentor, find, because you feel so inspired when you surround yourself with people who understand the mindset that they want to learn themselves, that they are not fixed. They are trying to fix themselves and they're learning from you and you are learning from them. And it's a beautiful environment. You know, they say, show me your five closest friends and I'll tell you who you who exactly you are. I feel that in today's day and age, like you said, the fourth revolution, today's day and age with technology, we can choose our five friends every single day. Correct. We have YouTube links. We have Instagram pages. We have why fill our social media feed with toxic people when we can fill our social media feed with people who can inspire us, people who don't even know us yet can motivate us, people who have no idea what we are going through, yet we know that they went through this. And because they went through it, they coming out there, putting it out there, teaching us how to go through it. Correct. Is it not important to then clean up our social feed? I call it a social media detox. Yes. And get yes. rid of all the toxic people on your social media and start finding informative ways. We're so blessed today. We can take out the phone and we have access to anything in the world. Correct. Yet we choose to put toxic people, toxic thoughts, toxic words into our mind. And then the toxic words come out of our mouth and then into the world. And like you say, when words go into the world, the universe listens to you and it will give you whatever it is you correct, want. Correct, correct. And that, that is why these kind of programs are key, particularly for the next generation. Coming here, someone asked me today, coming to your show again, they said, well, how do you define leadership? I said, okay, leadership has got two words um, for my definition too. One, a dynamic effective leader is the one that identify tomorrow's problems and solve them today. I repeat, a dynamic leader is the one who will identify tomorrow's problems and solve them today. But how do you solve tomorrow's problem today? By spending time reading positive things so that already those problems can be tackled by today. Reading, the social media can be good but also can be bad. The second definition, an effective leader is the one that will identify people with potential. 
So what do you do with those people? You enable, equip, empower them to be better than you. So that means you must always be able to feed the people. And to feed the people, you must always find resources and learn from other people. Now with technology, no excuse. One hour a day can make a difference just on investing in positivity, putting, having a positive mindset, a positive outlook on life. It will change you. It has changed me. It changes your thinking. It changes the way you look at things. Even South Africa with load shedding and our president having his money hidden, whatever, that's another story, you know, with all of the other stuff. Still, South Africa, with all the problems, this country is still great. But who makes South Africa? You and I. Remember, we determine our future, not the politicians, not the circumstances, but we determine our own future. That's exactly it. And that's the message that I want to get across with motivation. And that is why guests like you are so unbelievable, because you bring this message across with such powerful words, such impactful words and such dynamic words. I hope you, the, uh, the listener and the, the viewers of the show, are feeling this as much as I'm feeling it. We're going to take a short air break, but when we come back, we're going to go to our final segment with Dr. David. I hope you're enjoying this. See you after the break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. I'm going to dive straight into this with Dr. David. Dr. David, we spoke a lot about adversity and how people can build on adversity and try and have this positive mindset. Can you give the viewers some practical ways that they can deal with adversity, knowing that you've been through a lot, the death of a child, a broken relationship, loss of money, being in prison at 13 years old. Those are things that most people won't even know what it feels like. But people find adversity and people see adversity in a different way. Give me some practical methods that people can get through their adversity. Well, this is important. I'm going to give you five things because my name is David, D-A-V-I-D. I'm joking. <laughs> I have five things. Number one, <laughs> face your adversity. Don't run away from it. The key word is face it. And the beautiful part is the creator has given us the ability to face adversity. Remember, you can never conquer anything until you confront it. Think about it. You can never win over something until you confront it. So your viewers today, what is it? What adversity? Is it personal, professional, relational? Whatever it is, keyword, key word, face it. How I, I have survived adversity is the ability to face, to confront. You don't go around, you confront. You know, I'm a gossiper, I'm a liar, I'm this. You know, you've got to confront. Face your adversity mm. because you can never conquer anything until you confront it. Right. The second thing is trace it. Where is it coming from? Sometimes we give circumstances too much airtime. Mm. It's my wife. It's my husband. I always joke that, you know, mm. God comes to Adam. Adam, what happened? Adam says, H is the woman you gave me. I never turned that for her. I never applied to her. <laughs> then Eve said, H, it is the snake. And of course, the snake did not have any legs to stand on. You know, <laughs> supposed to be a joke. There. But trace it. It's one thing to face, but trace it. Where does it come from? And most of the time, it's because of our Negative thinking. Most of us are in adversity today because of negative thinking. Yes, sometimes is circumstances beyond your control. You face, you trace, where does it come from? Right. But number three, you begin to grace your second. What do you mean grace your circumstances? Grace means what lessons can be learned from here? Don't be too hard on yourself. We are so hard on ourselves. Don't raise a standard so much that you forget even to congratulate yourself for little successes. Yes, you have failed. So what? What lesson did you learn here? So that you do not fail out of this. Give yourself grace. Allow yourself space to grow in this area. Then number four, place your adversities. What do you mean place your adversities? If you do not place your adversities in the right perspective, they can destroy you. That is why you need to find people you can trust, some professional you can trust, where you can unload and unpack these things. Because if not, you become worried. And here's a problem about worry. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it does not take you anywhere. Mm. You can worry and worry. You don't sleep at night. You put the rech markers. You do all of this. It doesn't take you. Anywhere. It's just like a rocking chair. So place it. Have people that you can trust, that you can be able to unpack. I'm not doing well today. Remember, I run a big, what we call an organization called the I Can of Fathering. Because fathers need to unload. Yes. Men are going through difficult times. Who is it that you can trust? Who is it that you are accountable to? We can say, listen, 
I've messed up. I've screwed up with my wife, screwed up with the kids. I'm not a good dad, whatever. You need someone you can talk to who will not judge you. Place that thing so that number five, you erase that adversity. So you face, you trace, you place, you grace, and obviously you erase at the end of the day. Those things have helped me. So anytime I hit adversity, I go to those five things. It's like a system for me, and it has made me a better man, a better husband, a better father than I am today. Hey, but those are seriously practical ways Correct. of being able to do it. I wish that we can all take this lesson, learn from it, implement yes. these five things into our life and understand as men, we want to keep everything in. Women have groups that they can share Correct. with. Women have uh, friends that they can talk to. They can pick up the phone. Mom, I'm going through this. Women have that ability. Men are told to keep your emotions inside. And I, and I love that you brought the power of vulnerability. Yes. In, into the into the conversation today because men are holding it in. We've been told from a young age, you are, you are a big boy, don't cry. Big boys don't cry. Boys don't cry. Don't be a girl. Don't be a sissy. We've been told this from a young age. And I find it so important that men, as we get older, need to find someone, whether it's in our partner, whether it's in a friend, whether it's in a counselor, whether it's in a therapist. But we need to find someone to be able to talk to and say, you know what? I'm going through this. I, I'm... I'm hurt, I'm disappointed in myself, and I want, to, I want to make it right. Just getting it off your chest will ease that burden that men hold within themselves all the time. David, Good. this has been unbelievable. Before we go, I just want to acknowledge you for the amazing individual you are. I want to acknowledge you for the presence that you are. I want to acknowledge you for the motivation that you bring to everyone, myself, and hopefully the viewers as well. This has been an unbelievable, unbelievable conversation. And I've taken so much from it. And I know the viewers have taken a lot from it as well. One final question before we leave. I ask all my guests this at the end. Hypothetical question. Um, it's the end of time now, end of your time. Many years from now, you've written all the books you want to write. You've done all the podcasts that you want to do. You've done all the TV shows. You've put your message out there to the world. ICANN has impacted millions and millions of lives. You've really accomplished everything that you need to, needed to accomplish. But for some reason, hypothetically speaking, all of that gets erased. And you have three things, three truths that you have to leave behind for this world. Everything that you've learned, everything that you've done, if you can summarize it into three things that you can leave behind for this world, what would those three truths be? Well, number one, that's why we believe in technology. If you go to www.ican4, the number 4ir.com, you'll see what I'm leaving, books, inspirational books, more than 52 that people can be able to download. Number two, truth is this, that what you do for yourself is gone when you are gone, but what you do for others will remain as a legacy. So I don't want to leave a vacancy. I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a footprint, not a bum print. I leave a footprint. <laughs> but the third thing is the three Ds of life. Continue to have a desire, be determined, and be disciplined. And at the end of the day, those three things are key for me. Finally, David, I know we spoke about this earlier, but what's your definition of motivation? Motivation means the motive for action and positive action. So that it's not about impressing people. It's about impacting people. I can, you can, together we can. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I hope this has been truly, truly inspirational for you. I hope that you have faith going forward. And as Les Brown always says, faith is the oil that takes the friction out of, out of life. So always believe in yourself. Always understand who you are. Always have faith in who you are. And always have faith that wherever you are, be it in adversity or be it in good times, know that this is leading to something else in your life. Have faith, believe in yourself, trust in everything that happens, trust in the processes, be it good or be it bad. You are unbelievable. Dr. David is unbelievable. I hope everybody has been truly inspired by this two-part series on motivation. I am inspired and I loved having every one of you watch us and I loved having Dr. David. Dr. David, I really want to thank you for everything thank that you, you are and yes, for the man. person that you are. Kind, thank you. Sir. Join us next week again where we dive headfirst into another amazing mind. This is motivation and let me motivate you.